A genus is a taxonomic rank used in the biological classification of living than fossil organisms in biology. In the hierarchy of biological classification, genus comes above species and below family. In binomial nomenclature, the genus name forms the first part of the binomial species name for each species within the genus, e.g., Felis catus and F. Sylvestris are two species within the genus Felis. Felis is a genus within the family Felidae. The composition of a genus is determined by a taxonomist. The standards for genus classification are not strictly codified, so different authorities often produce different classifications for genera. There are some general practices used, however, including the idea that a newly defined genus should fulfill these three criteria to be descriptively useful. Monophyly, all descendants of an ancestral taxon are grouped together. Reasonable compactness, a genus should not be expanded needlessly, and distinctness with respect to evolutionarily relevant criteria, i.e., ecology, morphology or biogeography. Note that DNA sequences are a consequence rather than a condition of diverging evolutionary lineages except in cases where they directly inhibit gene flow. Name. The term comes from the Latin genus, a noun form cognate with gigneri. It probably came to Latin from the Arabic gins, meaning type. Linnaeus popularized its use in his 1753 species Plantarum but the French botanist Joseph Pitton de Tournefort is considered the founder of the modern concept of genera. Use. The scientific name of a genus may be called the generic name or generic epithet. It is always capitalized. It plays a pivotal role in binomial nomenclature, the system of naming organisms. Binomial nomenclature The rules for the scientific names of organisms are laid down in the nomenclature codes which are employed by the speakers of all languages, giving each species a single unique Latinate name. The standard way of scientifically describing species and other lower-ranked taxa is by binomial nomenclature. The generic name forms its first half. For example, the grey wolf's binomial name is Canis lupus, with Canis being the generic name shared by the wolf's close relatives and lupus being the specific name particular to the wolf. The specific name is written in lowercase and may be followed by subspecies names in zoology or a variety of infraspecific names in botany. Especially with these longer names, when the generic name is known from context, it is typically shortened to its initial letter. Because animals are typically only grouped within subspecies, it is simply written as a trinomen with a third name. For example, because dogs are still so similar to wolves as to form part of their species but so distinct as to require separate treatment. They are described as a C. Lupus familiarize, while the wolves form many distinct subspecies, including the common wolf and the dingo. Dog breeds, meanwhile, are not scientifically distinguished. There are several divisions of plant species and therefore their infraspecific names generally include contractions explaining the relation. For example, the genus Hibiscus includes hundreds of other species apart from the Rose of Sharon or Common Garden Hibiscus. Rose of Sharon doesn't have subspecies but has cultivars that carry desired traits, such as the bright white H. Syriaca, Diana. Hawaiian hibiscus, meanwhile, includes several separate species. Since not all botanists agree on the divisions or names between species, it is common to specify the source of the name using author abbreviations. For example, Arnotinus A. Gray was first specified in a work by Asher Gray. Sister Rowe identified an immaculate white hibiscus on Molokari as a separate species, but D.M. Bates later reclassified it as a subspecies of H. Arnotinus. It thus now appears as H. Arnotinus ssp. Immaculatus or as H. Arnotinus a gray subsp. Immaculatus dm bait. When it is considered a mere variety of H. Arnotinus, it is written H. Arnotinus var. Immaculatus. 
Type each genus should have a designated type, although in practice there is a backlog of older names without one. In zoology, this is the type species and the generic name is permanently associated with the type specimen of its type species. Should the specimen turn out to be assignable to another genus, the generic name linked to it becomes a junior synonym and the remaining taxa in the former genus need to be reassessed. Identical names within the same kingdom One generic name can apply to only one genus. This is why the platypus belongs to the genus Ornithorhynchus. Although George Shaw named it platypus in 1799, that name had already been given to a group of ambrosia beetles by Johann Friedrich Wilhelm Herbst in 1793. Since beetles and platypuses are both members of the kingdom Animalia, the name could not be used for both. Johann Friedrich Blumenbach published the replacement name Ornithorhynchus in 1800. However, a genus in one kingdom is allowed to bear a scientific name that is in use as a generic name in a kingdom that is governed by a different nomenclature code. Names with the same form but applying to different taxa are called homonyms. Although this is discouraged by both the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature and the International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi, and plants, there are some 5,000 such names in use in more than one kingdom. For instance, Anura is the name of the order of frogs but also is the name of a non-current genus of plants. Aotus is the generic name of both golden peas and night monkeys. Enanthi is the generic name of both wheat ears and water drop warts. Prunella is the generic name of both accenters and self-heal and Proboscidea is the order of elephants and the genus of devil's claws. Higher classifications The type genus forms the base for higher taxonomic ranks, such as the family name Canidae based on Canis. However, this does not typically ascend more than one or two levels. The order to which dogs and wolves belong is carnivora. Size the number of species in genera varies considerably among taxonomic groups. For instance, among reptiles, which have about 1180 genera, most have only one species, tilde 360 have between 2 and 4 species, 260 have 5 to 10 species, tilde 200 have 11 to 50 species, and only 27 genera have more than 50 species. However, some insect genera such as the bee genera Lasia glossum and Andrena have over 1,000 species each. Which species are assigned to a genus is somewhat arbitrary. Although all species within a genus are supposed to be similar, there are no objective criteria for grouping species into genera. There is much debate among zoologists whether large, species-rich genera should be maintained as it is extremely difficult to come up with identification keys or even character sets that distinguish all species. Hence, many taxonomists argue in favor of breaking down large genera. For instance, the lizard genus Analis has been suggested to be broken down into eight or so different genera which would bring its tilde 400 species to smaller, more manageable subsets.